Thank you, Wally. And I'm delighted to be here at the Cato Institute uh, to present a book that I fear um, may seem, from its title, like I'm bringing coals to Newcastle, uh, why government fails so often. Uh, this is, after all, the Cato Institute. And uh, so uh, this message will be, I think, affirming to you. But what I hope to suggest uh -huh. is that um, you may not fully appreciate the reasons why government fails or the magnitude of the failure um, and, and how it might be rem those failures might be, uh, might be remedied. Um, that is to say, um, the, most of the discussion about government failure is a highly theoretical, rhetorical, uh, deeply politically philosophical level uh, rather than uh, at an analytical level based on uh, uh, empirical evidence. And so that's, if I have a contribution to make to the people at Cato, uh, that, uh, that may be to uh, enrich that particular uh, kind of, uh, of evidence for conclusions that you probably uh, have no need for uh, fortification about. Um, I'm also delighted to uh, uh, be on a panel with uh, Wally Olson, with whom I've worked for, my God, it's almost 30 years. Um, uh, he edited a book to which I contributed way back in the 1980s. Uh, and also to be on a panel with Arnold Kling, whose work I've uh, respected for, for so long. So I begin with the notion of a crisis. And of course, every book uh, is trying to sell the idea that there is a crisis. Uh, and this is particularly a, a, a crisis um, that, again, uh, Cato um, followers uh, are aware of and, and indeed have uh, emphasized in your own in your own lives. Um, I have a lot of data on the decline in public confidence in the federal government. I will only mention uh, a few uh, a few points um, of of special interest. Uh, even among Democrats, there has been a rapid and and, and precipitous decline in uh, confidence. Uh, Forty one percent uh, had. Uh, favorable views of the federal government in, in 2013. That's 41% of Democrats. That's down 10% in one year. And this was before Obamacare uh, was, was uh, launched. Um, according to the Brookings Institution, 56% of Democrats um, uh, believe that the federal government is mostly or completely broken. Democrats. Um, and uh, uh, I mentioned that these statistics were gathered before uh, the Obamacare uh, fiasco um, uh, in its rollout. Uh, Tom Edsel, in an in a op-ed in the Times yesterday, uh, suggests that uh, the consequences of that rollout are far greater than, uh, than uh, is uh, anticipated by, uh, by most political observers. He thinks it's going to ramify uh, throughout the next uh, several uh, elections. Uh, what is the biggest threat uh, to America's future, according to the public? 64% say it's big government, uh, while only 26% said big business. And this, this uh, uh, polling was conducted only a few years after the recession. Uh, so that's a, a, it seems to me a very telling uh, a point of uh, departure. In 2011, 79% uh, um, uh, of those polled were frustrated or angry with the federal government. 74% said the same thing in 2007 before the recession. Now, what are the reasons for this decline in uh, public confidence in the government? Uh, I propose uh, several explanations, but the one that I'm going to con concentrate on and the one that constitutes the bulk of my analysis is sort of a straightforward one. The government performs very, very poorly. When I say the government, by the way, I'm referring to the federal government, not other governments, and I'm referring to domestic policy, not national security, military, or, or foreign affairs policy. My uh, book is limited in those uh, respects. Um, uh, so that's my subject, why government fails. Uh, uh, and. Um, uh, the, 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 there are a variety of theories as to why uh, the, the government performs so poorly. Um, 
an emphasis uh, that will not surprise those of you who live in Washington is the, is the uh, explanation of partisan bickering and congressional paralysis. Um, the Democrats blame the Republicans, the Republicans blame the Democrats uh, for any failures that they're prepared to concede. Uh, I emphatically disagree with this. Uh, if you examine our history of political discourse, it has been tendentious, uncivil, angry, and uh, furiously uh, a partisan from the very, very beginning. Uh, some of the greatest achievements of the past, uh, the uh, Intercontinental Railroad and uh, Hoover Dam and Interstate Highway uh, System were accomplished only fitfully and after a protracted disagreement uh, by uh, policymakers. Polarization, I argue, is not the cause of our problems, it's the consequence of our problems. And there's a remarkable correlation that I think uh, confirms this, uh, this uh, point of view. Uh, first is that the growth in government spending and policy ambitions has paralleled almost perfectly, if you, if you chart them, the growth in public disaffection and contempt for government. Uh, per, capita gov uh, per capita spending by the federal government um, today is greater than in France, Germany, uh, and the UK. Uh, this, this growth occurs in good times and bad. It's unlinked. It's been set adrift from the Keynesian uh, cyclical uh, uses of, of government. Um, and it doesn't depend on whether Republicans or Democrats uh, control what goes on in Washington. Um, the debt to GDP ratio of the federal government exceeds m that in most EU countries. And it also exceeds uh, the Latin American average, just to provide some, uh, some context. Um, this growth of the federal government is obscured by a, a number of factors, uh, except to those who study these matters very carefully. One is the immense growth in private contracting uh, by the government, um, the immense participation in the implementation of government programs by nonprofits and uh, state and local uh, governments. Um, and the, the, the myth that the United States has a small public sector and is a welfare state laggard, although perhaps true in some comparative terms, is, uh, as a myth, <laughs> utterly false. Um, and uh, uh, one way of understanding what's happened uh, is summarized by, and I summarize in the book, by um, James Q. Wilson, the late James Q. Wilson and, and John Dulio who distinguished between the old system and the new system. The old system, they write, had a small agenda. When someone proposed adding a new issue to the public agenda, a major debate often arose over whether it was legitimate for the federal government to take action at all in the matter. For the government to take bold action under the system, the nation usually had to be facing a crisis. Each succeeding crisis left the government bureaucracy somewhat larger than it had been before, but when the crisis ended, the exercise of extraordinary powers ended. The new system is characterized by a large policy agenda, the end of the debate over the legitimacy of government action, except in the area of First Amendment freedoms, the diffusion and decentralization of power in Congress, and the multiplication of interest groups. Under the old system, the checks and balances made it difficult for the government to start a new program, and so the government remained relatively small. Under the new system, these checks and balances make it hard to change what the government is already doing, and so the government remains large. So my central theme, the core of my, poor, core idea of my book is that federal domestic policy failures are caused by deep, recurrent, structural, systemic, endemic conditions. It doesn't matter which party is in power, it doesn't matter what the state of the economy is. I think that as a result of this, uh, and and, and, and as a result of uh, my analysis of the reasons for this, liberals, conservatives, and I dare say libertarians have an, an enormous stake in understanding these reasons. Well, how do I analyze uh, the reasons? Uh,